Thank you for visiting our page. My name is Garrett Stroud, sales manager here at Avalon Test Equipment. Before your video begins, I just want to give you a brief summary of the services that we offer. We guarantee 24-hour calibration on PIM, sweep, and fiber gear. Once it's in the door, it's out the door the next day. We provide certified training so your crews are properly educated. And we pride ourselves on last minute rentals and sales so you can test with confidence. And above all, customer service is our top priority. If there's any test equipment requirements that we can help be a service to, please contact us at sales at avalontest.com. Enjoy your video. Today we're going to cover the Kalis IPA 700 PIM Analyzer. This is the most popular unit for the first net testing. I'm going to cover general operation and troubleshooting. The most important part of PIM testing is making sure that your connectors and cables are clean. Um, so the first thing we want to do is grab your alcohol swab and your cotton tip applicator, go in and clean all of these ports, especially the main PIM analyzer port. You want to do this the same thing with all of your adapters that you're going to be using and with your cable ends. So the easiest way to op-check this unit is to go ahead and connect the PIM source to the output port and torque it down. This comes with the 18 foot-pound torque wrench which is calibrated here and you always want to do that to make sure that you're using the same force every time. Once you do that, you go ahead and turn your RF on and you should be seeing around negative 68 dBm or around negative 110 dBc. Uh, that's pretty much what you should be seeing every single time you connect straight to it. The next step for OpCheck is to connect the load straight to the unit. You should be seeing around negative 130 dBm or negative 170 dBc. This shows that there's no inherent issues in the unit or the load. The final step for basic OpCheck is to go ahead and connect your PIM cable to the load and turn the power on. You should be seeing the same negative 130 or negative 170 dBc. This shows that there's no inherent issues in your cable. Go ahead and move the cable around to see if there's any breaks or issues at the ends of the connectors, which is where you're most likely to see problems. If you're not seeing anything that's acceptable, go ahead and take everything back off, clean it all again, put it back together, run the test again. If you're still having an issue, then most likely your problem is in your cable since you've already object the load and the unit itself. All right, so one of the things to do uh, if you're doing the first net testing or any distance to PIM is you're going to have one of these RTF modules as a range default. Go ahead and you connect the unit, uh, USB here and then the power cable here, and connect the PIM source to the top. You go into the RTF mode and then you go ahead and you click Cal and that will go through and make sure that the, I, uh, the RTF is working correctly. Uh, once that is all good to go, then you know that this whole unit that you have is working properly. One of the biggest issues we run into with the IPA series units are the batteries go in, they slide in. Uh, the newer models have little guide rails so that you can't slide it in an angle. A lot of the older models don't have that and what will happen is the battery goes in, gets jammed and bends these pins in the middle here. If those pins get too bent, the unit will not function and you will have a lot of issues. If they even get a little bent, sometimes the unit will function but you won't get correct results and sometimes the power won't be insufficient. Make sure to take care of these. If you're having issues with this, give us a call. IPA unit has fly points right here and here. Uh, go ahead and always connect to these when you're going up the tower. Do not connect to the handles. Uh, we've seen a lot of broken handles and a lot of broken units because they were connected by the handles. These handles are very rugged, but they cannot be used as fly points. Do not use them as such. So one of the issues that sometimes will happen is weird software glitches and if you're having some serious issues in the field, you can go ahead and do a firmware update or you can do a factory reset back to an earlier firmware at least to get you through what you're doing that day and then up to the new firmware again. So you can hold this button in from off and if you hold it in for 15 seconds or so, you'll get the recovery mode to pop up 
And once that occurs, then it will go to a screen that will allow you to boot different firmwares. And you can do the factory original firmware, which will at least get you through today. And then you can also go to the, origin, uh, to the new firmware. If you need to install new firmware, you have to put it on an SD card. Put the SD card in the unit, then do this recovery process. Um, you can always download the firmware off of Kalis's website. Download that, put it on the SD card, go into recovery mode, and bring it up that way. This is the most efficient way to update the software as well. Thanks for checking out our video on the Kalis IPA700. It's one of the best PIM analyzers out there. We do carry in stock all of the different frequencies, uh, including the newer 600 band. Uh, and we do offer 24-hour turnaround on all of our calibrations for Kalis. And remember, with Avalon, you can always test with confidence.